How many people with a GT40 go down to Pet Boys to buy sandpaper? Is this implying that if I keep on sanding on my Colt that it'll turn into a Ford GT? I don't know. Well, the reason I'm holding this is because I got my intercooler welded back together. And uh, my buddy Andy and his handy Synchro Wave 180 ran a couple beads around a new plate. Put a new piece of aluminum on this. I cut a piece of 14 gauge out, or I guess it was 16 gauge out of there that this thing was originally made from. And uh, we fabricated an 8 gauge plate to go over it. I've had to do that on the front and the back of the end tank already on a previous occasion on both sides. And um, well, what I'm going to do today is I'm polishing this so I can put my car back together. So I'm going to go over the techniques to uh, polish aluminum. And warning, um, if you see the shine you can put on this with your own hands, it'll be a short time before you get the urge to polish everything on your vehicle. And at that time, your dog will run away, your girlfriend or wife will leave you, and uh, you will never be seen or heard from again. Probably written up at work, a number of other things. We'll see how it works out for you, but uh, yeah, this is how you polish aluminum. The first thing is where to start. When you have a piece of aluminum that's marred up and you want to put a nice shine on it and get all the defects out of the surface, what you have to do first is figure out what grade of sandpaper you need to start with. Now, a piece of a piece of sheet aluminum from you know you can usually just polish that straight up, but if it's been scratched up in the fabricating process, then you need to figure out where to start. So. Um, what we have here, I've got a close-up of some of the scratches. If you have a scratch on the part that stops your thumbnail dead in its tracks, you need to start with 220 grit. None of this is that deep. So what I'm going to do with this is start with 320. If you have a cast surface, 220 is definitely where you'd want to start. Uh, it'll save you a whole lot of time, a whole lot of elbow grease. I'll give you an example. Down here on place where the hose clamps up. I think I have a scratch on this surface somewhere that'll stop a thumbnail. That one right there, if you wanted to get that out, you'd have to start with 220 grit. What I'm going to do here, grab some sandpaper. And the pack that I got has 400 grit and 320 grit, and I got some 600 laying around. But I'm going to use the 320 grit first, and I've got some water. And all you got to do is get your sandpaper wet and start sanding. And you want to go all the way across the part in one direction the first time and create a grain. And after you've got all the defects out sanding in that direction, you want to use the same grain and go across it in the other direction. So you see now we've got everything sanded down in one direction and there's a few scratches and imperfections in here. And I might be able to take that a little bit lower. So we've got a pretty obvious grain in that now from the two, 320 grit. And what I got to do now that we've gone in one direction is sand it in the other direction. But I have other surfaces to complete first. I've got some scratches on that side that I want to get out. Now when you're really talented, you can blend. Uh, you can blend the polished surface together so that if you have a flawed part, you don't have to polish the whole thing. Um, 
it takes a lot of patience to do it that way and each time you start with a different grit you need to spread out and go a little deeper than the previous pass with the lower grit sandpaper but uh, it's really just best to go ahead and polish an entire surface if you run into flaws on it that you need to polish out that way everything matches up once you put the final bling on it but I'm not going to polish the back side because you can't see that. And at this point right now, looks like we've got that side finished up in that direction. Yep, that looks great. There's a couple little scratches right there. I can take that out very quickly. And go over the welds a little bit. There we go. All right. No, you see it in the opposite direction. And each time, this takes less time. Because after you've sanded it in one direction and taken out all the flaws, you've left a grain that's only as deep as the sandpaper. When you go back over from the other side, because it's even, it uh, sands down a lot faster. And you wind up with a surface that the next grit of sandpaper will take off and clean up very easily. And you'll see we've put a new a new texture on it now traveling in that direction so now we flip it and do this again we do this on all the surfaces we want to polish and you can see the grain that's left by the sandpaper so now that we've gone in both directions we can step up to the next grit in this case 400 and you just cross the hatch again there's still a few scratches from that so I'll keep going all right we've taken out that texture time to do that elsewhere Got that one. Get the weld here. All right. Now time to go the other way. You want to let the sandpaper do all the work. All right. So that's it for that side. Wait. Which way did I go last time? <laughs> All right. You know, I already did this. Don't know why I'm doing it again, but here we go. Getting it ready for the next grit. Got them all out. All right, so we've got it down to the 600 grit. And what we want to do now is get out, dry this thing off and get out the polishing wheel. Got a straight shaft grinder. Um, this is black rouge. This is a cutting compound. It's actually very coarse and it has emery in it. That's why it's black. So what you want to do with this is load the wheel up. And after you get the wheel loaded up, start on the part. Still got a little way to go. I 
once in a while it's a good idea to clean the wheel out. Gotta let that sucker cool off again, man. Yeah, I'm gonna go get a t-shirt appropriate for this. Cheap crap. See? <laughs> That's some nuggets in that thing. I want to clean that out. Old cheap crap. T-shirt. This is the moment of truth. Whoopsh. And that's what's up. Of course, the more time you spend with it, the better. This side is a little shinier because I've polished it before. And that's a brand new piece, and I need to spend some more time with that. But you get the general idea. The finish will be as good as the amount of time you spend on it. The more you polish it, the brighter it gets. And another way to make the finish even better is after you're done with the emery compound, and you've got a nice bright finish, you can switch to the white emery, or sorry, the white rouge. It has no emery in it. It's a lot smoother of a texture and it's ideal for polishing aluminum and soft metals to a really bright shine. And uh, after you're done with that, I would entertain, especially if the car is ever driven in humidity or moisture, to use a surface treatment like Zoop Seal.